Hello and most welcome to 1640 of the series. Uh, we will today continue where I left off. 1657, the P episode actually. And we went into how ostensive gestures can help out with understanding that they are, so to speak, not complete. There is more needed to make for a complete understanding. enough in themselves, they need an addendum, an additive, to make for a possibility. Of understanding, they should also be contrasted to conducting an orchestral Concierto, where the conductor's movements are accompanying the musician's understanding, but it's not enough. You need extensive training, background, years of practice and so forth. So it wouldn't be correct to say that the music is, so to speak, directly stemming from uh, the conductor's movement. come together, but one is not an originator of the other. It is important not to confuse the two. They are working in different manners altogether. So we're trying to find an origin, a causative agent.
first cause as we mentioned earlier on this is very similar for comparing to our want that there is a inside of us there is a true perception and also comparable to the idea of memory that all experience gets stored up as memory something that makes it possible to take out the memory from where it's so to speak recorded or engraved somewhere in the brain Thereby the memory is the original or even the experience is the very first. And then it later gets reproduced, reformed. Unrolled, so to speak. and how they cannot only be described in words, they also need extensive definitions of sort. It's an important fact, as Wittgenstein underlines, that we need ostensive gestures in order to explain color words. It goes without saying that pointing also plays an important role as a criterion for determining whether a certain color word has been learned correctly. On the other hand, ostension is neither an infallible, infallible instrument of teaching nor a necessary or sufficient criterion of having 
learned a color word. As Wittgenstein points out, in many places, ostensive gestures are by themselves insufficient, since it's not possible to isolate an intended feature by means of such gestures. After all, we are not in a position to point, as it were, to properties, but only to objects. be the possibility of a mix-up, an erroneous collection or an unjustifiable separation of the intended characteristics. And note this, one doesn't point to red, but to something red. That is, of course, to say the concept red is not determined by pointing. Neither pointing by itself, nor the use of words by itself, will suffice to give a satisfactory explanation of red. But is it true
that colors cannot be explained through something which does not itself belong to the realm of color. It is true to this extent that without the criterion of pointing to a color, there is no checking and thus no training for the mastery of color words. On the other hand, pointing to red objects is not the only necessary condition of successfully learning red. Words too are needed. And what is especially important is an introduction to activities where the use of core words plays a role, serves a pers purpose, and has a point. Schulte makes here a very good point. The pointing by itself doesn't sufficiently explain redness or red. And we need a checking agent, and that is the pointing gesture also. So it's needed in a quite different way to control Words too are needed, and what is especially, I repeat, important is an introduction to activities where the use of color words plays a role, serves a purpose, 
and has a point. The activities where color words come in useful are immensely varied. this stage of learning and teaching color words it obviously may also help to mention parallels from other areas especially if one is dealing with such characteristics of colors as the distances between different shades the degrees of saturation or their intensities. It must be remembered in this connection that it is not one single factor, neither pointing nor words, nor indicating point or purpose, which suffices to explain color concepts. Understanding color concepts presupposes mastery of a variety of activities and techniques and only after a number of such activities and techniques has been mastered will whatever is specific about a certain color dawn upon the learner.
the third thesis amounts to saying that a person who is incapable of having a sense impression of red will never know what red means and will hence not be in a position to understand the concept red. idea behind this thesis is that in order to make a blind or colorblind man understand what we mean by red, it will be necessary to give him a new perceptual, perceptual or cognitive faculty or to find some other way of generating an expression of redness in his brain. What is true is that a person who differs from us is in not being able to identify colors by no means of his sense of sight will not be in a position to participate in most of our language games involving color concepts and the few games he may by means of certain devices be able to join in will not be played by him the same way as by us A man who is red-green blind for example will sometimes be able to identify red in virtue of the location of the color. 
but if it occurs at an unfamiliar spot of his visual field, he will no longer be able to state its location. Thus, he will, for instance, be unable to make independent comparisons between colors. A blind man may be able to mix and produce colors in the sense of painter's colors, colored lights, etc. And he may also be in a position to assert after having manipulated some mechanisms this is red. We would not be able to verify such an assertion without relying on some more or less complicated apparatus. Comparison of different shades of color and unmediated verification of color statements are evidently elements of the foundations of our use of color concepts. A person who is not able to perform these operations will also be incapable of grasping that which is specific about colors.
This fact, however, should not mislead us into thinking that experiencing something red impression of something red constitutes the specificity of the concept red explain in an what we explain in explaining the, this concept is not the experience had by us nor do we in any way employ this kind of color experience for the purpose of explanation it is only mastery of language games involving the words red and redness which will allow us to point out the specificity of this concept and to speak of a specific content of experience not mean that we have specific experiences which are generated by certain language games. is what is specific lies in the language game it lies in the fact that these colors and not those other ones are primary colors that we describe degrees of saturation in such and such ways that colors are mixed by 
means of certain techniques and so forth. All this does not mean, however, that such experiences are not real or that there are only oblique ways of referring to them. What it means is that we are inclined to call the specific element of this experience owes its existence to our techniques of using certain concepts and to their being embedded in the relevant practices. For this reason, Wittgenstein remarks, quite right, one cannot imagine any explanation of red or of color. Not, however, because what is experienced is something specific, but rather because the language game is so. The temptation to locate the specificity of an experience in the experience itself is particularly great in the case of psychological verbs.
And according to Wittgenstein, this is due to the fact that there, that here one cannot indicate parallels when one tries to explain the meaning of those verbs. certain experiences of taste and smell, for instance, it is possible to remind us of analogous tastes and smells, and thus give whoever is asking questions about them at least an idea of what one is talking about. Such a possibility does not exist in the case of concepts like memory, pain, fear. If someone asked what it was really like to remember something, we should not know how to give an, an answer of the type we could give had he asked what the taste of sweet bread was like. tempted to reply that remembering <coughs> is remembering a completely specific process with which one is simply familiar. One 
one might say. When I remember yesterday's, yesterday's toothache, for example, I remember neither my behavior nor do I feel to toothache again. I am entertaining a kind of picture. But it is not of the same sort as a painting or a photograph. Rather, it is something specific. In such a case, it seems, we are bound to use the same words again and again. Words like, it occurs to me. I am entertaining this picture and so on. But there is no satisfactory parallel of the kind we may be able to mention in the case of a musical phrase or when savoring a certain taste. And this inclination to return to the same, albeit unsatisfactory words, is evidence of our inclination to assume a specific experience.
so we continue. <laughs> Definitions. This makes it so it's very hard to untangle, so to speak. Once we know the color. It is awfully specific, we know it exactly. There can be no uncertainties, but it takes, we can figure out it still takes time to go into the deeps of it. we continue but as questions like what is going on in your mind when you are remembering or what is it like to be in pain are just as misguided as attempts explain these processes or states by means of description of experience the man who asks the question does not learn anything this way man who gives answers of this kind keeps being misguided. person who tries to get a kind of inner memory picture in order to answer a question about the nature of memory behaves like the man who tries to develop a private system of designation by paying special attention to an inner experience. The expression specific psychological phenomenon corresponds to that of the private ostensive definition.
expression specific psychological phenomenon corresponds to that of the private ostensive definition to attempt to point to a specific experience is just as useless and harmful as to attempt to create a private language. One can speak of rules and of language only where there are methods of checking, standards, in brief the possibility of training and learning. person who does not know what pain is can be informed about it only by being made to feel pain. But if, for example, I pinch him, then this is a public intersubjectively on intersubjectively perce perceivable, perceivable act which will fulfill its purpose only in situations in a situation offering the usual verbal and non-verbal surroundings. If someone asked what it was really like to remember something, we should not know how to give him an answer of the type 
we could give had he asked what the taste of sweet bread was like. to reply that remembering is remembering. A completely specific process with which, which one is simply familiar. One might say when I remember yesterday's, yesterday's toothache, for example, I remember neither my behavior nor do I feel too, toothache again. I am entertaining a kind of picture It is not of uh, the same sort as a painting or a photograph, rather it is something specific. In such a case, it seems, we are bound to use the same words again and again. Words like, it occurs to me, I am entertaining this picture. and so on. But there is no satisfactory parallel of the kind we may be able to mention in the case of a musical phrase or when savoring a certain taste. And this inclination to return to the same, albeit unsatisfactory words, is evidence of our inclination to assume a specific experience. Just realize I retook a whole page. Sorry about that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the most difficult text to see. But questions like what is going on in your mind when you are remembering? Or what is it like to be in pain? are just as misguided as attempts at explaining these processes or states by means of descriptions of experiences. The man who asks the question does not learn anything this way. And the man who gives answers of this kind keeps being misled. person who tries to get a kind of inner memory picture in order to answer a question about the nature of memory behaves like the man who tries to develop a private system of designation by paying special attention to an inner experience. expression specific psychological phenomenon corresponds to that of the private ostensive definition attempt to point to a specific experience is just as useless and harmful as to attempt to create a private language. One can speak of rules and language only where there are methods of checking, checking standards, in brief the possibility 
of training. and learning. A person who does not know what pain is can be informed about it only by being made to feel pain. But if, for example, I pinch him, then this is a public, intersubjectively perceivable act, which will fulfill its purpose only in a situation offering the usual verbal and non-verbal surroundings. I think that is very important. It cannot be fathomed directly. It needs to be directly in the situation and it also needs all the background information and understanding to be had. And I would, I would also say that this also shows that there is a, a scale. It's not absolute understanding. You can develop the understanding. And not two persons would understand it the same way, although they could understand it satisfactorily enough for the purpose. That doesn't imply sameness. of an experience which we tend for want of a better term to call a specific one can be elucidated only under the appropriate circumstances situation is similar to that described in the Grimm Brothers fairy tale about the man who wanted to find out what fear is. Or in Wagner's Siegfried. It is necessary to find or bring out a situation in which the person in question can learn to apply the word concerned.
only when Siegfried is confronted with what he has never seen before does he understand the anguish of longing and the heart in its tumult and is at last able to use the word fear According to Wittgenstein, the lesson which we should learn from such considerations is that whatever appears specific in an experience will have its basis in the relevant language game. That is in the technique and institutions which determine what it is in such cases to be right or wrong. generally be useless to answer questions about the nature of a psychological phenomenon by saying that it is something peculiar, something specific. First of all, this will help neither the person asking the question nor the one giving such an answer and secondly it will create the mistaken impression that here there is nothing to be explained.
explanation is bound to fail only if one presumes that the characterizing word specific is intended to refer to a private experience. What we have to understand is that the word specific which one would very much like to use here does not help. It is as little of a resource as the word indefinable. When one says that the word good is indefinable, A bird's eye view or conspectus of the use of a word is possible once one has understood the functioning and the peculiarities of those language games in which the word plays a role. is entailed by such a bird's eye view and how one has to go about in order to get there is yet another set of questions. It is important to see right from the start what is justified and what is misleading in our use of phrases like a specific experience or a specific expression. Thank you. 
and what we have learned through the questions considered so far is that specificity is not a property of the experience itself but the effect of a language game which enables us to talk about the experience and to get out our meaning across These considerations may also help to understand the following extremely puzzling remark from the philosophical investigations. Something new is always a language game. What Wittgenstein presumably means by this remark is that a what Wittgenstein presumably means by this remark is that a new form of expression requires an adequate and suitable context. Thus, if you wish to speak about music, you must not be ignorant about music. And you may speak about pain only if you yourself have had certain experiences and have learned to make a number of moves in certain language games. That which is new is not a pure and unfamiliar sound experience or a pain experience.
or a pain experience which is completely dissimilar to anything one has ever felt before. Even though both experiences are to a greater or lesser extent connected with instinctive immediate forms of reaction. so interesting. Even though both experiences are to greater or lesser extent connected with instinctive immediate forms of reaction, the experience as such are meaningless for myself. unless there has been a min minimum of instruction in the language games concerned. Even our so-called spontaneous forms of reactions, certain types of gestures or dance steps when listening to music, exclamations like ooch or, or help. complicated forms of behavior in the case of pain. We'll acquire sense only within and hence, through the connections with certain kinds of conduct and through being embedded in relevant practices. And the specific, finally, is equally a function of a language game.
what is specific in a color experience is not as far as we can make it intelligible a matter of private experience It is dependent on the rules played by our color concepts, which in their turn are not given to us by nature, but have to be learned. Just press here that Wittgenstein does not believe or make any claims for blank slate. The specific character of a musical phrase simply does not exist unless there is some understanding of music. A new experience is not even an experience. If the relevant concepts are lacking, that is, if one has not learned to make a number of moves in the language game in question, Interesting, that is true. It can't even be new if there is nothing in the language game. And if we do not know the techniques to be to be used in the language there will be no spontaneous reactions to our experiences, let alone any possibility of identifying and articulating what is specific in them. Chapter 5, page 54, in Expression and Experience by Joachim Schulte. Experience 5 In the course of his early attempt at a classification of psychological 
phenomena. Wittgenstein wonders if he ought to call the whole field of the psychological the field of experience. But even independently of a discussion of the problem of whether or not this terminology can be justified, it is necessary to see how the concept experience, which is central to Wittgenstein's entire philosophy of psychology, is to be understood. Mm. Good as time as ever to break when we just started the chapter. Let me just make a short recap. I think one of the most marvelous is that we cannot have any new experience until the proper language came for expressing having that is established. Uh, now I think you can see how deeply we are intertwined in language. We are embedded need to reread re it. And new experience is not even an experience if the relevant concepts are lacking. So if it's not established to a certain degree, this is always a degree in this. It's not a final thing. The world just out there as Thomas Nagel would have it uh, pointed out, sorry or analytical philosophers like D.E. E. Moore, Bertrand Russell, and so forth. And we also come to realize more and more how complicated even exclamations like ouch, help, wow are. They are indefinitely complicated, I would say. saying that something is specific or indefinable does not help at all. So using words to understand these things is like using the wrong tool altogether. You will not get, you will not be able to use the screwdriver properly. Maybe you have a Phillips screwdriver and you need the other one, the common one, and the screw will not enter into the hole. This is exactly the same when you don't deeply go into these things and sort of broaden your understandings of the how language and its interwovenness into the very core of reality.
and of course it's the duck rabbit all over but now it's so much harder to understand how does the aspect scene come into this but it does in a different way this time but still it does enter I now terminate 1560 I say thank you very much a very pleasant day morning night and sorry about the retake I made bye bye for now